May the Lord be with you. This is Pastor Ryan Stout over at St. Peter's Lutheran. It is Wednesday, and it's time for Wednesday evening Vespers. Now, over the past several months, we have been singing Vespers from Holden Evening Prayer. And this is actually going to be the last time that we use Holden Evening Prayer for a little bit, because next week, our daily videos are going to be a little bit different. I want to try to go through daily prayer, morning, noon, evening, night, from one of Lutheranism's greatest prayer books. So we will still have Vespers, just not hold an evening prayer. And for two weeks following that, uh, my wife and I are actually taking a little bit of vacation, a little bit of Sabbath, to come back uh, refreshed and relaxed for whatever the fall shall bring. It is a special day. Happy Olsak! which is to say St. Olaf's Day or St. Olaf's Wake. The readings that we are going to read tonight with our evening prayer are the readings assigned for St. Olaf's Day in the Eastern Church, and I'm going to talk a little bit about him because he really is one of the most interesting saints on the calendar, and uh, we'll, we'll get to that in the reading reflection. For now, let us still our hearts and begin in silence. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. <laughs> Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, Love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heaven splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving Spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to who God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For oh, your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen.
Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my prayers as an offering to you. O God, I call to you, come to me now, O hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God, deep in my heart may the light of your love be burning bright. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. All praise to the God of all, Creator of life. All praise be to Christ and the Spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Ephesians. Brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about you with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from John's Gospel. The Lord said to the Judeans who came to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He who entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. June is a month of Vikings in the festivals of the church. We've got St. Olga of Kiev, St. Vladimir the Great, and then on the 29th, the granddaddy of them all, St. Olaf, perpetual king of Norway. You can read about him in Olaf's saga, in the Heimskringla, the uh, sagas of the ancient Norse kings by Snorri Sturluson, uh, the great Icelandic poet and author. There's a lot that could be said about Olaf, a lot that has been said. I'll try to do the short version. He was a descendant of Harald Fairhair, the first king of a united Norway. And after Fairhair, many tried to reunite Norway. Olaf figured he might be just the guy for the job. He started out as a Viking, doing the usual Viking raids. He ended up joining the Joms Vikings, who were an infamous band of deeply pagan mercenaries, uh, led by Thorkel the Tall, um, a warrior who was famed for fighting with an axe in each hand. You know, you see that in a lot of uh, fiction, a lot of fantasy. We don't read about it in history except with Thorkel. He was apparently big enough to make that work. Well, there came a civil war in England between the Danes and the Anglo-Saxons, the Danes under Sven Forkbeard. And the Yom's Vikings at one point were in the employ of the English. Well, there was a bridge across the Thames in London. There have been many London bridges, and they've almost always had building shops and houses on them. The Danes were well armed and dug in on London Bridge like ticks on a dog, and there was no way the English were going to be able to take that bridge, at least not without terrible losses. So Olaf took his Viking longships and at full speed ran them underneath London Bridge, throwing out grappling hooks to attach to the, the stobs, the pylons holding up the bridge, yanked them out, the whole thing crashed down with all the Danes on top. This is supposedly the origin of the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down. Well, at one point, uh, one of the bands of Vikings that Thorkel and Olaf were associating with tortured to death a bishop, St. Elfeha, in, in the old Anglo-Saxon. It's more like Elfedge today. And Thorkel and Olaf were so ashamed by how the pagans behaved and so impressed by how nobly the bishop died that they decided to go to Normandy, the first great Christian Viking kingdom, to Rouen, there to be baptized. Because all the Vikings who came to Christ, they wanted other Vikings baptizing them. Later on, he tried to conquer Norway, and he was defeated by Canute the Great, Emperor of the North, ruler of Denmark, Norway, England, uh, big chunks of Sweden, proving that uh, the only thing that can stop a Christian Viking is a bigger Christian Viking. Now, because of this, Olaf became a folk hero to Norwegians living under Danish rule. That's why so many Norwegians are Oli or Olaf or Olafsson, right? But the thing that I like most about St. Olaf is the way he is portrayed in art. Whether it's paintings, statues, what have you, he looks like this. Aha! Can I hold it steady enough for you to see? This little statuette was brought to me by friends from Nidaros Cathedral, which was the capital of Olaf in Norway, and indeed one of the great archbishop cricks of the Middle Ages, but uh, that's just for church nerds like me. This little statue of Olaf, you see he's very tall and thin. In the Middle Ages, that's how they represented saints to show that they were very spiritual, not very physical anymore, oriented toward heaven. He's got a crown and a little globe with a cross, indicating that he was a king. A great big axe, showing that he was indeed a Viking in his misspent youth. And then he is standing on a dragon which has his head, identical heads. Why is that? 
because of all his conquests, Olaf's greatest victory was his victory over his younger, wicked self. He went from being a Viking to being a Christian saint. And indeed, no matter how great a warrior is, uh, no matter how noble a king might aspire to be, the greatest conquest, the greatest rule, has to be Christ in our own heart, conquering the old Adam, the old creature, the man of sin, that Christ might then live in us and we might be resurrected to new life already in the here and now as a foretaste of the feast to come, a preview for the world of blessed eternity in Jesus Christ. One of the reasons I like these Viking saints so much is because they were monsters. Like, they were legitimate sinners, not theoretical sinners. And they were sainted. They were forgiven. They were risen to new life, not by any merit of their own, but by the unmerited grace and mercy of Jesus Christ our Lord. And if Viking warlords can be saved by grace with their sins forgiven, then indeed there is hope, there is promise for us all. In Jesus. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. <laughs> An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, Humbling the proud of heart, you have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. God of mercy, hold us in love. In peace, in peace, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. 
For peace and salvation we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace between nations, for peace between peoples. God of mercy, hold us in love. For us who are gathered to worship and praise you, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who govern, that justice might guide them. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor in service to others. God of mercy, hold us in love. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy, God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace and depart in peace.